are a few ways that you can interact with us during this meeting and make sure that you get um, access to all of the features. One is that there's a chat function. So if you look up on your toolbar, you should see that little chat icon that um, we highlighted here in um, orange. And then if you do need closed captioning, if you select the more button, there is an option there to turn on live captioning. So feel free to use that and you can have the live captioning on during the meeting as well. Today uh, with us joining, oops, joining us today, we have uh, a few team members from our customer success team, as well as some of our team members who help and work directly on um, the solutions that we're gonna be featuring today. So I will start. Uh, my name is Shruti Ramaswamy. I'm um, vice president here at TechSoup for strategy and strategic relationships, and um, also work on the Microsoft program. So happy to talk to you guys a little bit more about that. And I'll pass it off to Vanessa. Hi everybody, my name is Vanessa. I am the customer success here um, uh, manager here in TechSoup. Sorry, that was a mouthful for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to help out in any any questions that you have. I will be presenting Asana today, but any questions that you have regarding Microsoft or anything related to TechSoup, we're right here to help you out. Okay. And Kevin. It looks like Kevin's a little frozen on our screen. Kevin, can you hear us? Okay, well, Kevin is also a customer success manager here at TechSoup, and he will also help us today in showing some of the solutions. And then I think we have, um, oh, Kevin, are you back? Yes, okay. uh, hard drive just crashed on, <laughs> so Kevin switched over to device two. Okay. Um, and then we also have, I see um, in our audience, uh, Steffi um, Kleiner. Um, Steffi is here. I don't know if you're able to come off mute, Steffi, and introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Steffi. I'm sorry, um, I don't think the video function is enabled for me, so I'm I'm just here uh, via audio. Um, I'm the program manager for Zoom, so feel free to, oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, so I am the program manager for Zoom. If you have any questions about Zoom and how it integrates with uh, Microsoft Office, feel free to let me know. Um, and also my favorite ice cream flavor, str Stracciatella. Oh, that's a good one. Um, and I think we also have Julia here as well. Um, Julia, if you want to come off mute and introduce yourself. Hey everyone, my name is Julia. Um, I work on the Asana program. Um, can you hear me? Great. Yeah, yep, we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, and I'm yeah, super excited to be here and answer any questions you have about Asana. My favorite ice cream flavor is probably mint chip. Oh, that's a great one. All right. Um, so we have a few other team members that are here today, but we'll be kind of going through all of our um, tips and tricks for integrating the solutions. And um, throughout uh, this um, series, we're going to just kind of demo and show you some of these solutions. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put those in chat. Um, and, you know, we want this to be an interactive session and make sure that we're answering your questions. So uh, we'll probably spend 10 to 15 minutes just showing each one of these applications and spend most of the other time just answering your questions. So feel free to keep them coming in chat. We are going to start with an overview of Box and specifically the Box plugin for Microsoft. So we'll talk a little bit about inserting Box files um, into your emails, saving email messages to Box, and then accessing Box within Teams. So I will stop sharing and pass it on to Kevin. Thanks, Rudy. Give me one second here. I've got to configure. And this. if you want, I can go first since I know you had to switch. Off. Yeah, I have to resync yep. the Why don't I do that? interface okay. on my uh, Outlook for Mac, which is actually a good discussion point for later. <laughs> okay, perfect. So why don't I talk a little bit more about um, what I was going to present, which was the Zoom plugin for your Outlook. Um, I uh, use we actually um, I was actually planning on showing you the full demo of this solution and I realized that our administrators actually make this a requirement on our outlook so I can't even remove it if I wanted to because it's so integral to how we actually uh, interact at TechSoup. So at TechSoup we use Microsoft 365 or Office 365 solutions for email um, but for most of our meeting functions other than Teams we use um, Zoom and so um, the Zoom plugin for Outlook has been a lifesaver um, in terms of the ease of creating meetings and making sure that you have the automatic Zoom invitation created and managed. It integrates directly with your Zoom account so that you don't have to manage all of the settings in multiple places and you can schedule meetings and you can create live meetings directly from your Outlook account as well. 
So I'm going to pause this share and actually share my desktop and walk you through how to um, download, download that plugin and then integrate it into your Outlook application. Okay. And um, I have was sharing my um, Outlook with somebody else recently, and they were horrified by how many unread emails I had. So I tried to change this so that you didn't have to see that I have like 500 unread emails. Um, but if you look um, on your toolbar in Outlook, you'll have an application here that says add-ins. Um, and so you can click on get add-ins here. And there are lots of different add-ins that are available for Outlook. So if you're not using that, I would definitely recommend if there's certain things that you use a lot of to see whether or not there's um, an add-in already available in Outlook. Um, some of the ones that I use outside of Zoom are also there are the box integrations that we'll talk about, but also some meeting finders like uh, so that you can easily schedule and find times across different people about times that you might want to meet. So if you go into here and you uh, select Zoom or you type in Zoom, uh, you'll see right uh, away there's a Zoom for Outlook plugin. Obviously, I already have that plugin installed, but there will be a button here if it's not added where you can install it. And once you install it, what it'll have you do is actually log in with your Zoom credentials. So you will need to be a licensed Zoom user to be able to use these functions. Um, and you can log into your Zoom account and that will automatically integrate a Zoom and your Outlook, both of those accounts together. So if you look here, I have um, in my Outlook already the Zoom plugin um, already integrated. So you'll see right in my toolbar, I have a little Zoom setting here, which I can schedule a meeting or start an instant meeting. So I select start an instant meeting, instant meeting, I can select start a video and it will automatically generate an, um, a video for me right there. And then I can just invite somebody to that if I wanted to bring somebody in, say we're having a discussion and I say, hey, can we just hop on uh, Zoom, which I've done um, while I'm in an email with somebody or something. And then I can just um, you know, automatically create that meeting. The other place where I think it's super um, helpful is while you're creating an, a calendar. So if I were to look at my calendar for today, which is kind of crazy, and I'm setting up a new appointment, um, usually when you're creating a new calendar invite, you're going to have your normal things in Outlook that everybody's used to. Um, and if I just click this button that says schedule a meeting, it automatically takes all of the configurations and my default settings from my Zoom account. I can press save here and everything is scheduled right there for me. So I don't have to do anything else. All of the Zoom information for that meeting is already in the Outlook invitation. And then I can just send that invitation and it's already synced with my Zoom account. So if I were to log into Zoom or if I was managing my Zoom meetings, all of that would be integrated too. So you could see that all in one place. Um, this has been, like I said, a lifesaver um, in terms of time and um, e efficient management of how we're managing our meetings. And it makes it so they're each custom links and so they're customized for the meetings themselves. If you have settings that require a password or things, you can always change your default settings in that pop up window that came up. Um, the other thing is if I were to create and make this a recurring meeting, um, and say that I wanted this to be, you know, a weekly meeting, it'll automatically update that Zoom link to make sure that that's uh, a recurring meeting as well. Um, and you'll see that the Zoom functionality is currently right in here. So if I wanted to change anything else, I could do that. Or if for some reason I wanted to make this a Teams meeting, I could cancel out the Zoom part um, and I could in incorporate a different meeting uh, if I needed to. So it's actually super helpful. It's all clickable within your Outlook browser and you never have to kind of move into different things and have to open up two browsers or two applications. You can do everything right within your Outlook. I'm gonna stop right now. Um, if anybody has questions, please feel free to put those in chat. Um, and with that, I'll hand it back to Kevin. Or is just Steffi, do you want to? Yeah, please. Yeah, just um, uh, just if I may, just add uh, one or, one or two um, sentences to that. Um, you already said that it's with the um, plugin in in Microsoft, it's super handy because you don't have to switch back and forth between Zoom, um, and uh, um, Outlook. However, I just wanted to mention even if you want to schedule uh, a Zoom meeting from, um that a desktop application of Zoom, um, the same thing happens. Once you type in all the information in uh, um, that 
uh, desktop um, app, it will automatically create uh, a, an Outlook invitation with the Zoom, invita uh, Zoom details in there. Um, but then, of course, you have to switch back to, um, to Outlook to finish setting up the, the meeting. But just wanted to say it, can al it, it also works right from the app. Shruti, I think you're muted. <laughs> Thanks. Um, uh, that's a great point. I'm just showing you the um, Zoom application as well. And as Steffi mentioned, everything is you know both ways. I can see all of my Outlook calendars right in here. And you can see some of them are not even a Zoom meeting. It'll say, this isn't a Zoom meeting. But when it is a Zoom meeting, I can join directly from here as well. And it'll open up that meeting. And I, I usually use this and have this open throughout the day because it's an easy way to see my schedule and then open things directly from here instead of having to navigate into Outlook each time to get into it. So thanks for bringing that up. OK, Kevin, I will pass it to you. Thank you, Shruti and Vanessa. I wanted to send a quick apology to those who attended the live event uh, associated uh, with this virtual office hour on March the 18th. Ran into some technical issues while attempting to uh, run through the demos for the Box and Adobe Sign integrations. I'm going to be re-demonstrating how to do that in this video. So let's go ahead and start. Let's start with the Box. Uh, integration. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I'm going to start with uh, Outlook. Really quick, I'm using Outlook uh, for Mac. Um, a little bit different um, than the um, Outlook uh, for uh, PC, um, just in, in, a, in, a very, um, in a very small kind of minute way. So um, again, you're going to need to get these add-ins first. So similar uh, to Outlook uh, for um, PC. I'm going to go in here into the catalog, find them, add them. I've already gone ahead and done that for both Box and Adobe Sign to move through this a little bit quicker here. Um, so we're going to start first by inserting a box file into an email. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click new email. I'm going to send this to myself. I'm going to just subject this a test demo. And I'm going to go ahead and move up here to attach from box. I've already connected uh, to this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a file folder here and click OK. And I'm going to click send. That simple. That ding you might have heard uh, is uh, the sound going out. Boom, there's the sound going in. Uh, we're good to go on that. The next up, uh, the next uh, part we're going to go through here is saving email messages to box. Um, I'm kind of glad in a way that we're kind of reshooting this because uh, there was uh, something I additionally wanted to touch on anyways um, uh, regarding this. So Box will actually save essentially two types of messages. It'll save a message with an attachment. It'll save a message without an attachment. Um, obviously, that um, sounds kind of simple on the surface, but it's, there's some uh, minute difference here. So uh, Box will actually scan for the attachment. It will grab the attachment. And it'll send the attachment where you want to go to it, into an existing folder or creating a new one. Um, a email message um, that has no attachment to it, um, you save it as the message itself. Box treats this uh, as an EML file. Uh, it's just it's just a markup file for uh, email messages, um, but just note that if you're going to save that as that, it's not treated as an attachment. So uh, we're going to actually go ahead and we're going to start with the attachment first, uh, to kind of demonstrate this. I sent a work picture uh, here to myself, um, you know, kind of updated from like 10 years ago, I think. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click save the box. And boom, here you go. Recognizes that it's an attachment. I'm going to click save attachment. I'm going to go ahead and add it to this folder here. And then I'm gonna click choose and it's saving the attachment. It might take a minute, it's been running a little slow here uh, this evening, but we're good to go here, okay? You can also see that you have the ability to save the email as an email file. I'm not really gonna necessarily show it on that because the only thing I needed out of here was just the attachment. So in this particular case, uh, this was actually an event uh, that I attended uh, virtually. Um, uh, the University of Tulsa where I'm at uh, was, uh, had this really awesome data presentation. Uh, I liked their CS department a lot there. Um, so this was actually the link to the Teams event itself. So there's no attachment to this, right? This is just a URL. So um, I'm going to actually save this event, right? 
So what I actually want to do here is I'm going to save this as an EML file. Like I just mentioned, it doesn't recognize that. Um, so I can choose either a file that I want, but just say like, oh man, like I want this kind of in a separate place. So let's go ahead and let's actually create a new folder here. Um, and we'll call this, we'll call this data seminars. And then we're going to go ahead and click create. And I'm going to click on that. And then uh, hi, uh, click that on the checkbox. And then and same thing, I'm going to click choose. And boom, this email uh, is saved uh, to that new folder that I created. Uh, so the last part I want to jump to here in Box is actually the Box integration within Teams. Um, if you're using 365 and you're using Box, use Box and Teams. Uh, it just makes sense. Uh, the user interface is great. Um, and I, I really think that you will like it. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So I'm going to switch over to sharing my screen with Teams here. And let me close that out. So the same thing, uh, like the get add-ins, the equivalent here is getting apps. So this is where I would go to look for an app. I would search in this particular case for box. And boom, there it is. I've already added it, so I'm not gonna go through the whole steps. Similar to like Outlook, you may have to, in this case, even if you've already done Outlook authentication, you're gonna probably have to re-authenticate into the app here. Um, in our particular case, I already went ahead and did that. So if I was at box, like your subdomain .box.com, like that's where I'm at right now, but I don't have to be there in a web browser. I'm working just within Teams. And the cool thing is here is, is everything that we were just working with is all there. Boom, the data and seminar EML file, boom, right there. So to me, if you're invested in Teams or thinking about getting invested in Teams, this just makes sense. Same things here. I can create a quick note within here. I can create new documentation. If you are, for some reason, like working with uh, both 365 and Workspace, we do that, nothing wrong with that. Um, you can create Google Documents here. You will, again, if you're not already logged in, you may have to authenticate a session against that. Uh, not a big deal. Um, the Microsoft products are all here, Box integrations are here. And again, I'm on a Mac, so I don't use pages or notes or numbers. Um, they're Macintosh productivity apps. Maybe you like them. If you do, that's cool. Like you can access them through here and I can also upload files here. So that is the Box plugin integration and then uh, accessing Box within Teams. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. Okay, so let's go ahead now and move on to the Adobe Sign plugin. I'm gonna share my screen back in Outlook. Again, Outlook for Mac. Uh, so the fill sign for signature and agreement status on Outlook for PC will actually be the Adobe Sign icon. And these will be part of the drop down expanded menu options. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, click new email here. Again, we're gonna be uh, sending a Word document for signature. So I'm gonna send it to myself. And go ahead and send for signature. I'm going to add a file here, the demo document that I created, and I'm going to click continue. Again, uh, with this here, uh, what it's going to be doing is it's going to be Adobe Science going to be absorbing the document and is going to be creating a modified PDF from this. So uh, depending on what your document looks like, um, Adobe is going to kind of detect some things that are existing in here. Um, if you're able to see the pop up screen in this particular case, uh, it was able to recognize that form fields were detected uh, within the document. Sometimes that's not the case. Um, I had actually created a date in here. So uh, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm actually just gonna go ahead and click on that. And then I'm gonna move down a form field line into there. Uh, regardless, um, it doesn't actually need to be configured fully. Uh, you do have options for editing. This is basically the Adobe Sign interface. Um, so, but I'm gonna actually go ahead and I'm just gonna click uh, send uh, as it is. Um, detective fields have not been reviewed. Um, I'm not interested in reviewing from this demo. Um, just know that when you're going through this process, um, Adobe is gonna interpret your form. So if there are things that it feels that needs to correct you, you, you may want to, to review the document. Um, again, as far as the signature field line goes, uh, you can push out a document that does not have that information or a form field at all. 
and Adobe is going to go ahead and actually take care of that for you. And that's the next part with the missing signature fields. Um, do you, uh, it's going to ask if, uh, if it's going to say that uh, it has the ability to add a signature block. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, I just hit send in this particular case because uh, there are form fields in this example. But again, you don't have to have the signature line in there. You could have a document that just basically states whatever it states. Um, and then Adobe is actually going to lift that for you. Um, if you were able to hear that ding, that's actually the agreement just being sent to us. So cool thing is, is here where uh, you have the ability as the sender of the document to actually check on the agreement status in the side menu bar here. I'm going to go ahead and click uh, the message that was just sent. Document was created by me. Document sent out for signature to essentially me. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and then just close this out. And there is the uh, document that was uh, just sent. Okay, so uh, one thing that actually could be done, so is, uh, again, if this is something that you maybe kind of want to have uh, in, in kind of the same fashion as Box, you kind of want to maybe have like a little bit more uh, micro control on uh, some of these processes. So you're a finance team and uh, the there's a group of people that you're working with and uh, you, you kind of want to disseminate uh, a copy of uh, said agreement, even across an entire group. Um, what you actually have the ability to do uh, is you have the ability uh, to send uh, this document request to an email address associated with a Microsoft Teams channel. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this and then bounce back over to Teams. So uh, here in Teams, uh, again, added uh, the uh, application, the Adobe Sign. Um, what uh, we're going to do here is we're actually going to go into a Teams channel from our actual tenant. Uh, this is just a, one that we set up for a certification exam. If I click on the ellipsis here, uh, there's going to be an option that says get email address. So what is that? Well, that is an address that is associated uh, with that particular Teams team and that general channel. I can send an email, uh, a, a general Outlook email. I can send an Adobe sign request. Uh, I can send a box document directly to a Teams channel. So I went ahead and copied that. I'm going to go back into Outlook here and I'm going to create a new email. And that is the group that I'm going to send that to. I've already created a contact card for that. Uh, and that's actually maybe something if you like to play around with Teams um, and you're going to start integrating stuff like this, actually creating contact cards for these email aliases might be a better idea because it'll make the process a little cleaner. You won't necessarily have to remove uh, extra title and other in, uh, unnecessary information that doesn't uh, actually pertain to the address. So I'm just going to title this Adobe Demo. And please sign by end of week. And then I'm going to go ahead and click send for signature. And I'm going to send that same exact docx file uh, to this particular channel. And I'm going to click continue. I'm going to run the same process, processing document, converting to PDF. You're going to get the pop up uh, that is, uh, again, if it does recognize form fields, it's going to call it out. Um, in this particular case, this is kind of a half put together example. Um, but, uh, you know, we're just going to kind of work through that here. So I'm going to just put down the extra field line and then I'm just going to click send. Again, when you put these together, it's kind of the level that you want to put it to. It's probably best practice to have a template already kind of in place that you send. Um, but just know that you can actually just take a, a ragtag Word document and turn it essentially into a PDF document uh, that's ready for signature and just let Microsoft or let Adobe sign and Microsoft kind of do the uh, heavy work here. So I'm not going to review this. Um, I am not going to do anything as far as with signature fields because Adobe is actually going to do that for me. And the demo uh, has been successfully sent to signature uh, to the channel. Let's go ahead and check on that. Slide back over into Teams. And there it is. So the uh, signature request has been sent to that Teams channel. So I'm going to pop into Adobe Sign. So 
what I uh, like to do here um, is I'm a fan of is the chat bot in here. So say that again, finance, I'm wondering like where the status is of on something, right? So what I'm going to actually do is I want to know like what the, what the prompts are uh, for, uh, for running this uh, searches on stuff, say. So I'm going to go ahead and click help and hit return and boom, there it is. So this actually tells me like what the prompts are for initializing certain functions. In this particular case, I want to check the status of the signature for this document. So I'm going to go ahead and check status. It's going to ask me, what is the name of the document you are checking on? This has to match to what the actual document is. Otherwise, you are going to get a message back that it doesn't know what you're looking for. So there it is. There's the signature um, for that. So that wraps up the Adobe chatbot. That's Adobe sign. We touched, we touched on box. These are two great integrations uh, to add, to play around with, to learn about. Um, it just, it, it does, uh, it helps alleviate um uh, a bit of the workload, it levies up some of those mailboxes that, you know, tend to kind of get overrun with stuff. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can approach this. So uh, thank you again for your attention. Uh, and certainly those, again, who attended the live event, I do apologize uh, for the technical issues that were experienced during that event. We hope that everything uh, was beneficial. Um, and now with that, I'm going to go back into the, uh, switch it back over into the final portion of the uh, live event. Um, one thing I also wanted to note, and I'm sure we'll, if we have time, we can talk through this a little bit more afterwards. But um, the interesting thing, I think, with um, signatures and things is that it can be introduced as a part of a workflow that you might already have. So for a lot of organizations, um, there might be approval processes that you need to like get um, uh, something signed off or a budget signed off or even, you know, that we're going to this proposal that we're all working on and we want everybody to make sure that they've signed off, that they've read it and they agree with it. Um, you can kind of develop that as a workflow and we can talk a little bit about how some of these solutions also integrate with um, Power Automate, where you can create some of these workflows and have that integrated as part of what you're doing so that as soon as you send out a documentation for review, you implement um, the Adobe Sign aspect of it to be something that's acknowledging that you've completed it and that that will um, be logged in that way. So there's a lot of like robust features that exist within the Microsoft suites of solution um, that integrates with all of these other apps that we're talking about today. So um, if anybody's interested, I'm sure we can talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, and then Vanessa, I'll pass it to you to talk a little bit about Asana. And if you want to start a little bit with um, how we might be using Asana and um, where that integration would make sense would be great. Yeah, for sure. Um, so for those that you're now familiar on what is Asana, basically Asana is a web and mobile word management platform um, and is designed to help teams organize, track and manage their work. Um, and you're able to create workflows. Um, it comes already with tons of templates that you're able to leverage. Like, for example, if you want to get a one on one meeting, you are able to get the key points that you should talk about, how you can organize yourself. Um, I personally have an Asana for myself that I love tracking myself to and making myself accountable. <laughs> so you can do that too. Um, and, and it has different type of, of workflows. Like I said, you are able to track an event if you want to. You are able to um, create one-on-ones templates and and also um, any other onboarding process that you want. For example, I know that my uh, my HR team, uh, we call them PNC here, people in culture here in TechSoup, um, they track the onboarding process of a new employee. Like, for example, the moment that they that they get to us, the moment that they um, do all the courses that they have to do, the moment that they get the hardware, until um, the moment that, uh, for example, that they're fully onboarded and they're able to keep track of that. Um, and good thing about it is that you are able to add um, people to your workflows. You're able to add, for example, Kevin. If you want to collaborate with him, you're able to uh, um give them tasks to do and then due dates, which is very helpful. And then a great thing that we're going to learn about is that we're going to learn how to um, integrate that to your email in Outlook and how you can um, add documents to it. So let me go ahead and then share my screen so we can get started. 
And as you're pulling that up, um, Julia or Steffi, if there's anything else that you wanted to add on Asana, please feel free to. Will do, thanks. Alrighty, so one of the things that um, that you can do with your Microsoft tools is that you can attach uh, files to tasks so you can keep them um, connected to your work in Asana. You can synchronize your tasks and projects deadlines to your Outlook calendar so you can stay on track and get notifications. You can turn emails into actionable, trackable tasks and comments in Asana without leaving Outlook. You can also add your Asana projects to group chats to get updates and, and create tasks for your action items without leaving teams. And also you can increase this uh, increase the security of your data by uh, requiring your teammates to log into Asana through Azure AD. Um, so you know that nobody is actually getting into those workflows, um, just only people that work for the organization and people that have access to that specific project. So the first thing that we're going to learn is that we're going to um, learn how to attach files to your task. Let me go ahead and then reshare my screen so you can see that. Perfect. So um, this is my uh, my specific project that I'm working in and this moment um, is going to be the test virtual um, office hours. And then one of the great things about it is that you're able to touch any of your um, of your files that you have in your OneDrive to any of your tasks. So let me go ahead and then um, open this specific task that is due for today. Um, right here, um, you're able to see that clipboard. Um, and then once you click on it, it's going to display um, like a little drop down with all the options that you have to attach a file. You can attach a file from your computer. Uh, we talk about Box 2. Um, you can also um, leverage Box to it, um, Google Drive, Dropbox, and at this point, we're going to try one with uh, OneDrive. So let's go ahead and then click on it. Hopefully you are able to see a pop up that just um, pop up in my screen. If you're not able to let me know and I'm able to reshare again. But if you are able to see it, um, it should be saying um, that um, I have a pop up from OneDrive and I'm able to select a document. Hopefully you're able to see it. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and then click test um, my my folder, test virtual office hours, and I'm going to select my my document. So once I click on open. Um, you're going to be able to see that once I scroll down, you are able to see right here the document that is already attached to um, uh, to my to my task. So that's a great thing about it. You don't have to go um, to OneDrive to pull out that document. You're able to do it straight up from your uh, from your workflow and your um, in your task. The other thing that we're going to learn is that how to turn emails into actionable and trackable tasks. So let me go ahead and then reshare my screen again so you're able to see my outlook. Perfect. So I have an email here from Kevin um, that I would like to turn into um, a task on my Asana project. Um, like Shudi explained, you are able to get the add in here. Um, you are able to um, click on it and then type Asana, and then you should be able to add it to your um, Outlook. At this moment, I already have it, so you're going to be able to see the icon here. So um, once you select any of any um, any email that you would like to turn into an action um, into your Asana project, um, you are able to click on Asana and then create Asana task. It's going to load. Perfect. So um, you're able to see that, um, that it came up with a name. Um, it's called follow up on rental vendor and cost research. You are able to customize this um, as you please. I'm going to assign it to Kevin. And I'm going to assign a due day. I'm going to say that is for um, next Thursday. And then you are able to select the project that you want this task to be with. So I'm going to select test and then I'm going to select virtual office hours. You're going to be able to add a description. In this case, I'm going to do. Um, do all the things on this list. 
and you can add, uh, add the attachments. In this case, it's going to be this um, picture in the signature. Um, and I'm going to make it public so everybody can see that too. And then I'm able to create the task. Perfect. So um, the task is already created. Um, Kirin probably already has an email um, coming from Asana saying, hey, Vanessa added you um, to this project and then um, and then create a task for you. I will add my email as a comment so Kevin can reference back to the email that he sent me and then he's able to um, make sure to um, do the, the, the list, um, the, the things on the list that he sent me. And then one of the great things about it is that it's very automatic. So at the moment that I um, I refresh my screen, let me go ahead and then reshare my screen so you're able to see it. Perfect. So at the moment that um, that you fresh your, your screen again um, into your sign up, you're able to see that um, it was added. So um, I already have the task from Kevin. Um, I assigned him, and then you're able to also um, see that the email that I the Kevin sent me um, it displays here um, correctly here. So the other thing that we're going to learn too is like how you're able to sync your tasks and projects to get um, notifications on Outlook. And then this is very simple. Um, once you have a project or you have a task that you want to sign in your calendar to, you're going to click on here um, in the arrow and you're going to go to export and you're going to click on sync to calendar. Right here, you're able to not only sync it to your Outlook, but you're able to sync it to your Google Calendar and another um, calendars that you might have. Um, in this case, we're going to click on I call Outlook for other calendar or other calendar. Here, this link, you're able to um, use the link um, to um, to your Outlook for web. In this case, we're going to use a desktop application. Um, by clicking the link, um, I'm going to get uh, an automatic download from the calendar. And then once I save that, I'm going to open it up here. And then it would automatically open all my calendar. And then you're going to be able to see right here that that's how um, that's how it um, that's how it displays on my calendar. You have the one by uh, side by side my personal calendar here in TechSoup and the Asana calendar that we just created. And then you are able to manage um, all of the all of the tasks that you have here. You're able to invite attendees. You're able to even um, create this as a um, as a Zoom invite or as a Teams invite too to talk about that kickoff meeting with the stakeholders too. And then you're able to add people to it. So it's really um, great to um, to keep yourself um, accountable for the things that you need to do and also to get reminders too. So um, I don't know if you guys have any questions um, that we are able to answer. Yeah. I think there's a question um, Jim has, particularly about the differences between Asana and some of the uh, the tools that are already available in the Microsoft 365 suite, like Planner, Lists, and To Do. Um, and I think Kevin talked a little bit about this in his response, but it would be great to hear maybe um, Jim from you on kind of the what you're looking for in a tool and what you would primarily use it for. I would say Asana was really built for these types of um, collaborative task management as well as like a very project management style. Um, the planner and things like that are similar to if you've used Trello boards, it's like very Kanban style. It's like thinking about um, iterative projects and moving things from, you know, different states of stuff. Um, but, you know, to do, but if you're trying to manage your own personal tasks versus managing projects on a whole, it'd be great to get a better sense from you as to what you're looking for and, and um, happy to talk to a little bit about the tools too. And you can feel free to come off mute or you can um, put it in chat. Um, I think that one of the things that for me I really like about Asana is that you're able to create goals for your um, for your projects and for the team. So um, and then you're able to put the company goals too, um, and the team goals. So you're able to know that 
um, for example, if the project is going through um, the, the goals that Texas wants, like for example, we want a credible uh, planet, and then the things that I'm doing, um, are they getting um, tracked to that goal or not? So I think for me, that's one of the difference too that Asana has that uh, other, um, other platform doesn't have. Um, so I think that's one of the things that I like Asana a lot too. Yeah, I would agree with that. Just the the richness, like I had put into the comments, it's just it's a really deep pro product. It's just it's built for task management. Like that's planner, like lists to do. I mean, it's really kind of like it's a hierarchical thing. You're probably not going to get quite as much out of the box by doing that. Like to Trudy's point, Kaban boards. There's probably a, a multiple factor of more templatic designs versus Microsoft, you might have to do some of the legwork yourself to actually get it configured that way. Safi, did you want to add anything? Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, just um, um, other features that I really like about Asana is uh, they offer a lot of templates as well. So if you're looking for um, projects, you kind of don't know yet how to set it up. They offer a lot of like projects. Uh, Project templates that guide you through the setup of your of your project. Um, also, what I like is that every you can add like an overview page for every uh, mm. um, every project. So you can include all the important details, all any like workflows you can set up um, uh, on that overview page. And another cool feature that I really like about Asana is uh, you can set up intake forms. So um, uh, kind of like a form where you set a contact form, for example, uh, and that will automatically then create um, a, like a task, for example, um, in Asana directly in Asana environment, just depending on what kind of process you, uh, you um, set up on the, on the back end for that. But it's super easy to manage and uh, just like additional effort about Asana and uh, the other feature that they features that Asana offers. Great. Um, there are a few questions that are popping up. One is um, if we could just show how that overview page looks. I don't know if one of you guys have one that you can show real quick um, uh, uh, on the team site right now. Um, the other question is, um, you know, we need something s simple and quick for infrequent users. So the other element to this, obviously, is that um, if you're already on a Microsoft 365 solution, you already have planner to do and list as part of your thing. So you don't have to pay additional licensing fee for. So if it's something that you're only going to use a couple of times or if you just have a few users, you do have that already built in. Um, Asana, uh, you need to have the licenses for Asana, but Asana does have like uh, basic premium, the different packages as well, which include a free version. So you might be able to just kind of test out those areas and see if it's something that you might want to incorporate as well. Um, and then Jim, I see that your question about several approval workflows. And so um, I will, after we kind of show you the overview page, um, maybe we can talk a little bit about the Power Apps. I can show can an show example page, page oh, oh. Yeah, as well. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Feel free. Do you, uh, there's a Go share ahead, button Julia. next to your mic. Yeah, let me um, get set up. Okay. Can you see my Asana page right now? You can. Okay, great. I don't use Teams that frequently, so I'm a little new with it. Um, so this is a overview page of a project that I'm working on. Um, and you'll see it has a background, um, you know, a, kind of an overview of how we'll collaborate on this project, the who the project members are, key resources, and then some milestones to go along with this page. And this pulls directly from my list, which I can also then put as a board. And this is more of the Kaban, st Kaban style um, list. Um, and this can I think this is really useful in as far as both identifying who the different roles are for a project and then kind of the key resources like Steffi, Steffi went over. And then you can post updates on this uh, in this uh, view as well to know if the project is on track or say it's at risk um, and then kind of why it's at risk. So this is one reason why I really love using Asana for this type of project. Thanks, Julia. And one thing I'll just note because I'm a frequent person who gets tagged as pers people who have tasks 
<laughs> that are in Asana, but that is really helpful too. So even if I'm not a direct contributor all the time of a project, somebody can tag me into it so that I can see, oh, there's something that people need from me or I need to be approved um, or, you know, they want, um, you know, me to incorporate something in the document or things like that. So you can tag any user that you have in there and bring them into it as well, which is also really helpful for people who are not always used to going and might not be a little infrequent, but can still interact and see where the progress is as well. Yeah, I think that's one thing that's really nice about Asana. And you can also tag specifically for approval from someone, knowing that maybe they're the, you know, you're looking for their sign off to be able to move a project forward, um, which is a great feature of it. Yeah. yeah. And Julia, I just wanted to show uh, in your um, example, I just wanted, I, I noticed that you had like Google Drive folders uh, put in there as well. So you can integrate it with a lot of other tools and make sure that you can bring in all of the resources that you're working across tools and things as well. Yeah. And to tie back to um, sort of like how how uh, integrates with uh, with Microsoft, not really, it's not really an integration, but you can set up email notifications for mm. anything that happens with Asana. So, for example, if um, you're reaching a milestone or if you're getting tagged, you can set it up so you always get an email for that as well. So, like I said, not really an integration, but you can also um, set up those email notifications. Thanks. Um, so I know we had a couple questions on the workflows, and I know Kevin loves talking a little bit about Power Apps too. So yeah. it's a good solution. Um, but for um, I just want to uh, flag. So Power Apps is a solution that's available from Microsoft that allows for low code or no code options for you to create customized workflows. The assumption is that you do not have to be a coder or a developer to be able to create your own workflow and function. Um, and the uh, goal is that you can, you know, bring things together, create some if statements and things like that to quickly create a, a workflow for yourself. Part of that is that you can use a lot of the tools that we have, um, either any of the tools that we talked about or tools within Microsoft 365 to build that together. And um, Microsoft does make available to nonprofits um, five free donated Power Apps licenses, um, but they are separate licenses. Um, sometimes, if you want to develop and things like that, then what exists in your Office 365 suite. With that, I will pass it to Kevin. Sorry. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I was just in a seminar this week, very early in Europe, um, where we were, our cohorts there were actually talking about this. Um, it's I think it's a fantastic feature, so let me pull up the screen here where I've got this on. All right. All right. So as far as approvals, and then I'll go back really quick into here. Um, this is Power Automate. This is Power Automate Flow. So to Shruti's point, there are some components that you could leverage um, from, like you really, if you really wanted to supercharge approvals, you're going to probably integrate it with a Power App, which just really just means like, again, it's just understanding the logic of how like this works. It's not coding. It's really just, I have this application, I needed to talk to this application and to do this. So the cool thing here is, is there is a bunch of Power Automate flows in here. So there are several types of Power Automate flows. The ones I want to actually talk about um, specifically real quick are just automated versus instant. So uh, an instant flow uh, is a manually triggered flow. An automated flow is one that you have set in place. So you can, this actually communicates what app, what applications within the 365 stack are used. So SharePoint, approvals, and then Outlook. So to Steffi's point earlier, if you want to get a notification when an approval from a SharePoint list that you've created uh, has been uh, taken care of, you could just create and set that up. Uh, instant ones would be, for example, this is sending a notification. This notification could come to a phone by SMS. It could come to a Teams channel. That's usually how I like to tie things back in. Um, but these are kind of out of the box. And the nice thing here is, is there's also something called uh, Process Advisor, which will help you walk through like, like hey, I want to do this. 
Like I need, you know, some type of approval list to kind of put together. How do I do that? Well, process advisor is there for that. But to the point of Asana, Adobe and Box, there's integrations for all of these within 365. So this explains like what the trigger is. So like when I create a project, like what do I want to do? When I start a project, do I want to send a message to a Teams channel? Do I want to send an email to a distribution list? Like, I mean, there's really a lot of things you can do. And these are not really complicated. I mean, I've worked with actually, you know, some very small churches that have mentioned in the past, like, hey, we just want people to know about this. And maybe we, we don't necessarily want to send an email. Is there a way that we can just send a notification to them because they don't work very frequently? And it's like, sure, we could send an SMS message to them to let them know that you created, started creating a project for your food pantry, you know, something of that nature. So these exist completely across the spectrum. Zoom is the only one that doesn't have Microsoft published, um, but no, it's not bad. So the, 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 <laughs> the geniuses at MIT actually have an independently published one through the open source, um, the open source forum platform that are open source courseware. Um, so to the point earlier, we're asking about alternatives to things. There may or may not be an integration naturally to it, but there's also the possibility that one could eventually kind of be built. It's not built as in something complicated. It's it's really just about even submitting that even to to Microsoft. Um, I've actually seen probably a half dozen new independent apps published just since the beginning of the year. So if you're something that you want to use that is a low cost or no cost alternative to XYZ. I'm not, I'm all for that. So I think that, um, you know, there's, there's many ways to kind of get these uh, systems to talk to each other. Yeah. I, thanks for providing that. Actually, it makes me remind myself that I should be looking at some of these too, instead of creating my own workflows a lot of time. And one thing I also wanted to note, and I'm going to just share my screen really quickly, if you guys can see, um, is uh, the licensing I talked about was specifically for Power Apps, but all of the Power Automate templates that we we're talking about are already inherent in your Office 365 suite. So if you go to your office, um, office.com, um, all of you here have Office 365 or a Microsoft 365 license already. If you go um, to your apps, which is that kind of um, all these buttons here, um, you can see Power Automate is the option here. If you click that, it'll open up a browser here and you can actually see um, and you can bring in Power Automate. So all of this is already available to you. And as Kevin mentioned, you can search for Asana or search for other tools and you can see all of the tools that are brought into place. But there's so many in here that are already created that you can use. And then the Power Apps feature is if you need to customize and create your own. But there's a lot here that are already um, available to you. And so um, especially if you're already using these tools, we would definitely recommend you check them out. Okay, so I think we're getting to the last couple of minutes. Um, we hope that this was helpful and interesting. Um, I did also want to note there's a question in here from Vanessa, like it'd be great to learn a little bit more about what you'd be interested in learning um, and how much, um, the, you know, how these uh, sessions are helpful or not to you. Um, it helps us making sure that we're getting the right information and um, that we have the right topics to bring up for the next couple of sessions as well. And so I'll also just share really quickly. And as we mentioned in the chat, um, we will send out a recording so you can have follow up for this. But we do have some resources available. Um, we have a getting started um, guide. So if you are still getting set up with your Microsoft 365 or Office 365 licenses, there's a guide to help you set up your licenses. Um, we have the digital transformation forum that you can join and start connecting with um, organizations or just asking us questions. And then we also have our digital skill center training courses. So we have training courses that have been created um, particularly for nonprofits. And we have a lot of training materials on the Office 365 and Microsoft 365 suites. So feel free to explore those a little bit more and we'll share all of these resources with you after the meeting. So um, thank you guys for joining us today, and I hope you have a great weekend and a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye.